What up YouTube, Check Race Charles here on my way back to the casino for a two a day. Played earlier this afternoon. I uh, had some uh, a little bit a short session of three five no limit. Ended up winning, I think just around 500. Not many interesting hands of note for that session. Ran good in two spots against the same opponent. Uh, the first one folds to me in the cutoff. I have pocket threes, I open to 20. The aforementioned player calls on the button. The small blind calls, the big blind calls. Flop comes three, four, six with two spades. It goes check, check to me, I bet half pot. Uh, the player on the button jams for like 100 and something, maybe like 110, 120. The other two players fold, I call and hold. And then later on, he opens up to 20 under the gun, gets like three or four callers. I have kings in the big blind. I make it 120. He jams for like 300-ish or 280-ish or something like that. I call and uh, board runs out clean, no ace, uh, under cards, uh, and, and kings are good. I didn't get to see his hand again. So I ended up winning 500. Uh, on my way now to go play some pot limit Omaha, or hopefully play some pot limit Omaha. Uh, the game is full. It is 11 p.m. We'll see if I can get a seat. Supposedly there's a list, so it could be a bit of uh, some time before I can get in. Anyway, one thing I wanted to talk about uh, while I've kind of got a moment is regarding, I guess, scams in poker, uh, as well as just kind of like frauds. Uh, I've kind of noticed recently, I've, I've been playing poker for about like 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. So I've kind of seen a lot of, you know, kind of come and go just in, in my experience. I think it's important to, you know, much like with poker, to have, you know, reads on individuals. Knock on wood, I myself have been extremely lucky and can say that I've never been scammed or robbed, which I think literally of all the people I've ever known in poker, I can't say the same of. They've either just kind of been robbed, whether that's at a casino, like walking out of a casino, had their apartments robbed, or just being scammed by friends who are asking for a loan. Particularly, I have one uh, friend who, who's unfortunately kind of been screwed multiple times in different instances, the last of which was like a friend of his who was helping out, uh, have lived with him and play poker, just up and kind of disappeared one night. Uh, you know, they, they went to bed and the next morning when he woke up, uh, the guy had cleaned up and just left, uh, owing him like $1,500 or something like that. Uh, you know, obviously just realized he was in debt, wasn't winning, was probably broke, and just had to get out of there. So I think it's important to understand that you have to, you have to kind of be careful what you get yourself involved in. Uh, I think generally the best uh, practice is just to kind of not get in the habit of uh, lending people money. That's my personal policy. I just I just uh, tell people, you know, if anybody needs a loan or something like that, it's just not something I do. It's my it's my policy, and it's kind of the best way I think to handle this situation. Um, because you're gonna find that oftentimes, you know, if if somebody is kind of in need of help, you can essentially write that money off. Regarding kind of frauds, uh, I've just kind of noticed recently there's just a lot of people that are you know full of shit whether it's on uh, social media uh, I guess mostly social media Instagram things like that talking about how big of a winner they are the things they can accomplish how well they're doing and then you know all of a sudden they're kind of selling packages for things with crazy markups I've seen you know markups for people that are like 1.4 1.5 which is absolutely absurd for tournaments you know never mind for like the best players in the world uh, so I, I think, you know, if you're seeing that someone's telling you how good they are and then all of a sudden they're looking for a steak, you know, that should smell funny to you. If someone's trying to portray a certain image, you know, what's going on there? I'd say for most people, if they're a winning player, they have no real need to let the world know how well they're doing uh, and, and, you know, how much they're winning. Personally, this vlog for me is kind of uh, an enjoyable experience to create. I'm not the best player in the world. I've got a lot to learn. And so this is kind of a learning experience for me. It gives me an opportunity to kind of create something in poker and just be honest about things. That's my personal reason for doing this. But I think if you're finding that people are letting you know about, like for example, I've seen some crazy things where people are telling these hand histories, these absurd hand histories where they're like, what would you do with pocket threes on a 9-10 jack queen board? And so you can immediately 
just tell like, okay, this guy is going to make some sick hero call and be right because I mean, why else are they telling you about it? If something doesn't pass the smell test, then you should be able to realize like, okay, this is absurd. And uh, you know, what, what are, what are they trying to sell me here? My point here was it's important to kind of have your wits about you in poker. Be honest with yourself and don't fall for, you know, ridiculous things that you're seeing. Similarly, I think that if you have gotten scammed, uh, it's important to talk about uh, the individuals who are doing this. You'll often see pros don't really want to talk about it because there's this hope that if they don't out the person, there's a small chance they'll at least see their money someday, right? Because if you if you out them, what's the likelihood they're going to ever pay you back, right? If you let everybody know that there's some kind of scumbag that doesn't pay you. But I think it's important once you realize, like, okay, like this guy's a scam artist, you have to let people know so that other people don't get burned. It's about the only way for people in the poker community to uh, look out for one another because, you know, there is a lot of scamming going on. If you've kind of had some experience about it like this, I'd love to hear about it. I think it's important to talk about these things, and uh, it opens others, other people's eyes to, like, what's going on. Uh, like I said, if something seems too good to be true, chances are it probably is. All right, well, just got to the casino. Uh, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about regarding kind of the scams and frauds. Keep your wits about you. Keep your eyes open. Don't, don't fall victim to uh, people's ridiculous stories. Anyway, good luck to us. Hopefully we can get in this game ASAP. All right, thanks, guys. Peace. And we are back. Drive home, it is 5.30 in the morning. Just wrapping up. Got a quite a, a quite a number of PLO hands to, to detail. Got myself into a number of spots. So let's see how many of these I can remember. I think there's about like four or five big hands that I played. Let's start with the first one. It uh, folds to a friend of mine on the button. He pots to 40 one of the uh, weaker players in the big blind calls 40. I have king, jack, jack, seven double suited in the straddle. I call 30 more. The flop comes seven, seven, three with two spades. The small blind checks, and I think I make a mistake here and decide to dunk, which I think is a, a mistake against a good competent opponent because he can put me in a lot of tough spots. You know, I don't have like the top of my range here as far as having ace seven, seven, three, pocket threes. So I put myself in a tough spot if he does raise. Uh, which is what he ends up doing. He ends up making it 400. Uh, the small blind folds. Another reason I hate leading here, obviously, is because he should be betting his button here fairly wide, which is what I want him to do. I want to keep his button betting range very wide here. And it allows the small blind, which is one of the weaker players in the game, to make some calls, low repairs, and make some mistakes here when I do have a 7. So I think I like, I like checking here way better than I do uh, donking. I, I think I'm too strong here to be folding. So I decided to call. At the same time though, I think I should have a, a better plan as to what to do on various turns. You can have some like, you know, a lot of like value hands here as well that he thinks that could be the best hand, right? Like if he ends up having some queen 10, nine seven, something like that, uh, which he's gonna think he's the best hand. So it's kind of a tough spot, I think, once he raises. I end up calling, uh, I'm gonna be putting myself in a tough spot on basically all turns that aren't a spade, because obviously like I think spade can slow down action. Similarly, uh, you know, obviously if I don't turn a king or a jack, I'm, I'm not going to really love any turns. So the turns of three, double pairing the board, I check and he puts me all in for like eight or nine hundred, maybe it was like a thousand. And I pretty quickly fold, which I think is a mistake because I think he can be fairly wide here. He knows that I like making hero folds. He understands that once I just call flop, I'm fairly likely to not have like 7-3, three, 3-3, three, three, or a7 because I'm, I'm probably going to just pile flop with these hands. I think it's a call off here with king 7. I end up folding. I try getting information from him. Uh, he doesn't really let me know what he has. He ends up making some comment how he, he wasn't really sure if he liked his bet. And then when I tell him I folded king 7, he says he does like his bet given that I, I'm able to fold king 7. So it sounds like he ended up, you know, bluffing me or at least getting me to fold the best hand, not necessarily bluffing me because he could obviously have a seven, a weaker seven here, uh, you know, as part of his value range. So I lose that hand. Uh, maybe we should get into some hands I won. Actually, here's now a, a fun spot for a hand that I did win. It uh, limps around to me in the small blind. 
I have King, Queen, Queen, Jack with the Queen, Jack of Clubs. I decide a pot out of the small blind. Um, none of the better players are really have limped in this pot. I'm not really afraid of them having limped strong. Uh, I think I'm going to be ahead of you know, most of these people's ranges, and I want to build a pot. Uh, despite being out of position, um, I think I'm going to have you know the best hand here fairly often. I make it 60, and we end up going three ways to a flop, which comes 10, 9, 3 with two clubs. I flop a queen eye, flush draw, and a, uh, an upper wrap. I could obviously lead here, but if raised, I don't think I'm gonna have much of a decision about the pile. So I decided to check um, and allow some weaker hands to bet. I think uh, I'm gonna just have this board crushed fairly often. I think it's close between a bet and a check. I end up checking, he goes check, check, and now uh, one of the better No Limit Hold'em players um, knows what he's doing in No Limit, recently started playing PLO, I think he has good card sense. He ends up betting 160. Obviously, I could put in a check raise here, but given that I have a queen eye flush draw, uh, it's very possible that you know he could have limped like ace x of clubs, um, and I'm, I'm not doing that great against uh, the nut flush draws. I think it's like pretty close. I'm playing about 1100, I think, after I've raised preflop. So obviously, I can just pile here, a check raise, but I think if I do that, I'm going to eliminate many of the hands that I have in bad shape. So I decided to just call. Turns it off to Jack, I make the nuts. I decide to check and he checks back. The river is a brick, it's like a four. Um, so I still have the nuts. Now I think that his his range here is gonna be uh, fairly weighted to having missed flush draws, as well as possibly having some worse straights, maybe a set, which you can value bet. Given how I play the hand, my hand looks a lot like aces, I think given that I'm potting out a small blind, check calling flop, and then you know check, check in turn, checking river. So I think my, my hand plays here best as a check because he's going to be continuing with his bluffs as well as value betting worse. He decides to bet 360, and uh, again, I once again, you know, try to, to balance my, my goofball range. I end up kind of speaking to him. I think he's gonna be bluffing a lot, so I'm, I'm trying to get call light here from the range of hands that, you know, obviously if he's bluffing and I'm, and I'm raising here, he's gonna fold all of his bluffs. So I'm trying to get called by the worst straights. Uh, I want to portray an image here that I could not have the best hand. So I end up saying something to him along the lines of like, oh, so I say to him immediately, I'm like, David, you bluffing me here, man? And he's like, oh, what do you mean? I wouldn't have a bluff. So I show, I show him, he's like, what do you got? So I show him two queens and he kind of shakes his head for a bit. And he's just like, I think he says something along the lines of like, you have to fold or you don't have the best hand or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I have to fold, huh? So like within like, I think f like five, six seconds, I end up jamming for about 600 more. It's kind of a comical spot because I think so much of the table, they realize like I'm going to have like the nuts here fairly often. He kind of goes into the tank. So a couple of players at the table actually laughed at the situation uh, kind of like immediately when I jammed. He ends up going into the tank and ends up making a crying call. Not sure what he ended up having. I think that if uh, if I didn't give the speech, maybe he finds a fold, maybe he makes a call anyway, but I think that he's gonna be finding a fold against me there pretty often, because it's gonna look like I have the nuts a lot. I think showing him the queens lets him believe that I could be turning them in like, you know, a bluffing blocker. So that worked out fairly well, obviously, in uh, my benefit, despite being kind of goofy and a little ridiculous. Now we get ourselves into a, another fun, goofy spot. Limps to me in small. I complete with ace, 10, 7, 8, nut, spades. Now the big blind pots to, I think, 70. Folds to me. And obviously I could be finding a fold here, especially considering I'm out of position. Obviously I want to be calling in position. I think he's going to be pretty heavily weighted to aces here. So I should just be finding a fold. I think the appropriate thing is to, to find a fold. But uh, I like to make a call. Uh, at the time, I was winning. I, I, these are spots, you know, heads up, where I think maybe incorrectly I can outplay opponents. I think that oftentimes I have a pretty solid image, so I'm going to be able to, to make some bluffs on scary boards. So I decided to call, you know, half expecting to try to outplay him on various boards. The flop ends up coming 9-7 deuce. So we're heads up. The flop comes 9-7 deuce. So I flop uh, second pair, open-ended straight draw, 
Uh, I expect him to have aces here a lot, uh, even though I have an ace, so it's kind of nice to have the blocker to, uh, to, to him making a set of aces. Obviously, he doesn't necessarily have to, but I could also have uh, the best hand here by flopping a seven. Like, it's not out of the realm of possibility that he has something like ace, king, queen, jack, double suited, something like that. So I check, and he bets 125. I obviously could check raise here and play for stacks. He is playing about 800, but I think if he has aces, he's just never folding. Uh, I expect on a 9-7 deuce rainbow board, he's just going to stack off with aces because there's just it's just too dry. Like, what am I going to have here? A set of 9, set of 7s, 9-7 maybe. So I expect him to think that I'm going to have some sort of straight draw here, maybe some combo draw. Obviously, I could have like some 10-9-7, flop 2 pair, 10-9-7-8, flop 2 pair. But I think he's just going to call it off if I check raise. So I don't really love that play, even though my hand has decent equity against aces. I just call... Turns a nine, and when it turns a nine, I expect uh, this card to have it go check check very often. Um, you know, obviously, if he's gonna have aces, I expect him to check because it's gonna hit me way more than it is him. I don't expect him to have to protect on some like uh, on a nine seven deuce rainbow board. So I think it's gonna go check check very often, and that's gonna kind of put me in an off awkward spot on the river because he gets the pot control and you know kind of snap off river bets. I decide to lead turn for two sixty put him in a tough spot it leaves him about with like 450 ish uh going to the river perhaps i should size down actually a little bit smaller maybe to 200 so that i can uh be able to to bomb river for a little bit larger he thinks for a bit and calls river's a king uh which again i think is kind of good for my range i could have kings here could have a nine i i jam all in this was shortly after the hand where i showed the queens so he ends up saying something to me along the lines of like, oh yeah, you want to show me a card as well? Which is kind of annoying because obviously if I've already shown that I have a tendency to talk in a spot where I have a hand, I should be doing the same here. I thought about what I could show. I was leaning towards showing a seven, but I think that's kind of a mistake because it's going to look like I'm trying to rep sevens full and he's just going to think that I'm not going to have the seven here very often. Looking back in hindsight, what I actually should have done is showing him the eight which would, i think would have been just an excellent card because it's going to look way more like i have some like nine eight seven ten nine eight something like that obviously if i show him an eight he can have like eight six but again still when i show him an eight my hand's just gonna heavily connect with a nine so i think showing him an eight would have been best because it looks like he's leaning towards a call with aces he ends up making a hero call with aces and wins so now i'm stuck again like 800 crazy i know given the fact that i'm wearing my lucky t-shirt i can't lose i'm wearing a lucky t-shirt right and now we're back to being stuck like i think 800 win a couple of small pots and now we play this fun hand folds to the button who is the no limit player that i had mentioned earlier he raises the 30 we're playing shorthanded small blind who again is one of the worst player one of the weaker spots in the game he calls i have 10 9 8 4 with the 9 8 of diamonds uh, I make a loose call here for 20 more with the the, the, the connected 1098. You know, flop flop comes pretty good. Here comes the old 10 jack queen of diamonds. We flop a straight flush. Uh, goes check. I check. Original opener checks back. Turn is a 10 or a jack. I forget. I think it might be a 10. I actually end up forgetting that I have a 10 in my hands in this spot, which is, you know kind of important obviously now the small blind checks obviously i'm gonna i'm gonna try to build a pot here go for value i bet small uh, i think i bet like 40 pre-flop raiser folds and now the small blind calls river is a jack so now it's jack jack 10 10 queen there ace king of diamonds is a royal i have the straight flush with 98 of diamonds and there's two quads there is a bad beat here for uh for omaha it's a smaller bad beat than the than the larger jack beat larger bad beat for for no limit hold him he checks i think that he can often obviously have here uh the quads i forget that i have the 10 so i actually think that uh you know it's possible that he has 10 quad tens and quad jacks so i bet 125 i think and now he check raises to 400 fairly quickly he has another 700 left and i'm going to the tank because i'm trying to figure out uh you know, obviously, he could have Ace King of Diamonds here. I think when he check raises here, um, you know, he could have the boats. I think I'm gonna have a hard time getting calls from boats. So the question is, 
the combos of quads versus the combos of the ace king of diamonds i forget i have the 10 so i count the two combos of quad tens quad jacks versus the ace king of diamonds the bad beat i think was like 7k so if i end up running an ace king of diamonds i win half of that 7k 3500 uh, otherwise if i end up having the winner then i get i think like 20 percent of the 7k i end up jamming for the the 700 more he snap calls i show my hand well no maybe not snap calls but he takes like like four or five seconds long enough for you obviously i can tell that he doesn't have ace king of diamonds but he still calls fairly quickly i show my hand and he's like oh straight flush he shows two queens for queens full uh obviously a little bit of a cooler for him but I think when he once he check raises river for value and I jam, that's a spot I should just be folding. I'm, I'm you know it's not like I'm gonna be jamming queen ten, jack ten there. There's just too many combos of the quads, the straight flushes. This is PLO. You know people do make crazy ridiculous hands. It's not like unheard of to people have straight flushes. I think you know he's a little novice to to Omaha, so he's probably just not used to that. So we end up winning that hand and uh that's kind of it for the session i end up booking a 750 dollars win in plo which feels nice booked a 500 hundred dollar win earlier today as mentioned in hold'em it's a pretty solid day i am a bit upset with how i did play in plo it's been a while since i've been playing plo i think i made just numerous mistakes the the king jack jack seven hand i think is clearly a mistake for me to be leading that flop there's just no reason for me to do that. I want to keep his ranges wide, uh, especially against a good thinking opponent. So I, I hate how I played that hand. That's just clearly a mistake. And then the hand, the, 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 the bluff I tried to run through, didn't really love that. There were a couple of things I could have done differently. You, most importantly, obviously, I could just fold preflop. There's just really no reason that I have to call preflop there out of position with the ace 10, uh, 7, 8, 1 suit. Um, you know, in position, I think I can make a speculative call, but against the aces specifically, I could be folding here. Um, anyway, that's it. We are back home. It is almost six in the morning. Charlie might be waking up soon. Got to get back to bed. You know, again, I think I think I actually played kind of like my C game tonight. Uh, a bunch of mistakes. I think I could have easily won like 2K if I played better today. But instead, you know, we had like the, the $700 win. So I'm not in love with everything that I did. Um, but that's poker. It's a learning experience, you know. I really believe that a lot of the function of how I played was just being tired. I felt myself being pretty tired. I was on the fence about going to play. I've been up all day. And this is kind of, you know, what happens when, you know, you play poker uh, for a lot of hours after A, playing through the morning. And then, you know, <laughs> being with your family for a bunch of hours and then only going back to play again. And so I, I think I definitely played my C game as a result of just being being exhausted and not thinking clearly word to the wise it's best to play under optimal conditions you got to be you know well well rested have a clear mind but you know even if you don't you got to have the lucky t-shirt you know the lucky hamilton t-shirt because like i said when you got lucky t-shirts you, you can't lose you can't lose what, what can i tell you anyway thanks for uh tuning in i uh, appreciate you guys uh you know checking out the channel and I uh, hope you have a good night. Peace.